Okay, is everything set up properly? What about this? What about this? I think we're good, guys. I'll leave it to you, Mungus. You can you can keep it. You try barbaric roar on Shemshir. Gives more eye armor than sword dance. No, dude, that would not. I would not trade sword dance on Shemshir, dude. Sword dance is like one of my favorite dash of war. It's really strong. Yeah, Barbaric Roar is much slower. Like, Barbaric Roar is something you do not want on the Shamshir. You want that on, like, fucking Fist. Does anyone use double slash? I've seen I've seen some players use it to like some decent extent, surprisingly, but I really think double slash is bad. <clears throat> if you don't like sword dance anymore, you see it everywhere. Really? I don't really see it that often, honestly. <sighs> also, Sword Dance kind of tame when you compare it to fucking... Spin Slash and Storm Assault, so... I don't mind when I see it. Yeah, I see Spin Slash everywhere, though. Yeah, like Cause said, like, I do see Spin Slash, like... Quite often, even. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this map right now, but keep invading here. Oh. I don't know what I was doing there. I was actually going to attack. I've been here before. Told you, great bow stream. Great bow stream, dude. <laughs> Like, the longer the game has been out, the longer you can sort of develop these, like, kind of textbook plays and sort of, like, map-specific plays, right?
Like, you can really only do that if you know the map. Well, I mean, it's not like this map is very complicated, but in the grand scheme of things, there's so many damn areas that, like, knowing one map is not bad. Knowing two maps is good, too. Then so on and so forth. more forward momentum on greatsword than than anticipate Whoa. insane game dude This sh stupid ass motherfucking game. guy is getting saved like really hard no hit oh, oh shit net I know he's going to roll. That's payback for earlier. Oh. Insane red, actually insane. <laughs> He's insane. <laughs> why is the Ko always an idiot? Because they they never get to play with Ko's, that's why. Like, I took a big reason why Reds are dumber in this game is that they never actually get to play with other Reds, so they don't know what to do now. There was more co-invasions then. Maybe people would understand the concept a little more. Well, I mean, not that it's a very difficult concept, but... Yo, what's up, Jay? Co-invading for the first time then confuses the objective, yeah. You usually get good reds. I'm unlucky. Well, probably karma. <laughs> You're huffing an extreme amount of copium that DLC introduces Covenant. I mean, man, honestly, like the DLC is one of those cases where I think it's best you keep your expectations like fucking dead low. Okay, we got one of the- we got a typical castle soul spawn, where we spawn like extremely far from our objective. This is level 200? Uh, no, I'm at level 6 right now.
Oh, there you are. Yeah, I knew I heard something. Absolute incarnation of not giving a fuck. The <laughs> guy just one it one HP just keeps spamming. All right, I'll do the same. Care about your grades? Yeah, I mean. I think people I think you should care more about what you learn because the grades don't follow you. What you learn will though. I'm gonna be honest, it's not that hard to get good grades if you uh if you actually try to uh <clears throat> to to be good at school or you can even cheat for that matter, I don't care. But learning learning's important. Having perfect grade is often a sign of cheating. I don't know about that. Bro, someone gets good grade. Oh, he's cheating. It's like the first thing. Uh... I thought he was on the other side. That true combo. Oh, and he skipped animation. Holy shit, dude. These scary Wi-Fi warriors, like... Motherfucker gets fucking three hits on a row because of a fucking trade combo and a skip. This game is scary sometimes. I should try PC. Oh, dude, I have no, I have no desire to partake in the vanilla PC experience. I'm good. I'll leave it to you guys. Like, don't worry about it. I'm fine. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure it's amazing. But I'm generous. I'll leave it to you. Living a good part, you know? <laughs> You've been getting a lot of Neptune Net Warriors since the DLC. Oh yeah, absolutely, dude. Casuals? Casuals play on Wi-Fi, like... And we, we're getting a lot more of them. Activity has gone up, but shit connection have gone up with the Wi-Fi too. I find it kind of crazy, though, how, like... Game releases are so mediocre, like, I don't know if it's just my perception, but I feel like PC releases have been bad for quite some time now. I don't know, I don't really, like, I, I know that, you know, it's easier to, like, set up a game to, like, a specific hardware, and that PC, like, it's all different and everything, but when it comes to, like, stuff like what Elden Ring did, you know, like, adding artificial latency to, like, every fight, that's just sad, dude. That's just fucking sad.
like if I was to release a game I mean first of all it's easier to release them on PC even if like you know consoles have like a set hardware it's way easier to release games on, on like Steam and, and Epic so you might as well make sure the fucking game runs well on PC. Heck, the game is fucking developed on PC. <laughs> uh, anyway. What's the purpose of adding artificial latency? I mean, I'm sure they don't do it on purpose, but... It's just not knowing what you're doing. I'm not saying I would do... I would know how to fix it, but... I mean, shit. The... Luke, the modder, did fix it, but that's probably not a good example because... He's probably a very smart guy. Maybe they don't have these types of people at the company in, in, the, in these positions, so... Even though, like, you, you can always say that, yeah, but a modder did it. Yeah, some of these modders are actually, like... <laughs> like, technically better than a lot of people in the industry. Like, sometimes they are working in the industry elsewhere. You're the only real Luke. <laughs> Luke Roy, awesome. <laughs> the only real Luke. Still talked about it? I mean, it's been known for a while. I think the information originated from Amir, if I'm not mistaken. But it's, I mean, that's old. That's old info, though. I probably learned- I learned about it a long time ago, and I probably learned about it late. So I'm just saying. Insane. Amazing player. Dude, I got the bleed proc in my iframe, like, just at the right moment. That- that whole sequence was a bit lucky. You hate those flies? Yeah, me too. It's not- it's not a spell I enjoy. Did some Dark Souls 3 invasions. And I remember... I remember two months after Elden Ring came out when I tried to play Dark Souls 3 for 10 minutes. I actually missed the crouch mechanic like so badly. Why do you, don't you make a video about the artificial lat? Because I'm not in a position to do that. I don't play on PC, like... I'm not the right person to talk about that. It's more of a topic for Steel. Because he plays there, like, it, it affects him. Like, I, I can't even speak from experience, what would I say? Like, I talk about it here and there. You know, I mention it, but... I can't be, uh, I can't be deep in the topic. Because I, I don't know how bad it is. Well, I mean, I've seen it. And, uh, I have friends that, that know what's up, that tell me about it, but. Vale hopped on thanks to you on Dark Souls 3 after two years of not playing. Had a 45 minute duel with some cheater who cursed him and... I mean, he lost because he's cursed him. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so funny how cursed Vale is, dude. He, he gets on Elden Ring, like, first thing he gets is a fucking CE cheater. He gets on fucking Dark Souls 3. First thing he gets is a fucking cheater. This is so fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> Uh, this is so funny, man. Dude, I love Vale. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's so fucking funny, though. Oh, man. I want to say Vale has that karma, but he doesn't. Like, he's... He's an amazing dude, and... 
<laughs> also, it's not like his experience is too far from what reality actually is. Like, if you're actually good at the at the game, like you're gonna make the cheaters come out, guaranteed. <laughs> it's just how it is. But it's funny though because <laughs> uh, it always happens to him like the first invasion or like the first fight. <laughs> Wait a second. Are you fucking serious? Oh, we got we got like one of the shittiest spawn of all time. Like actually one of the worst spawn in the game. Like actually. This is probably like unironically the worst spawn in the entire game. Oh. Yeah, it is. Like, I'm not joking, this might actually be, like, the worst spawn. Like, this is literally across, like, the entire level. Okay, there you go. Okay, I thought they were actually further than that. I'm gonna stop chasing. And he's starting to get to a good range, though. Oh, never mind. I was about to say we might be able to turn around and and attack him. These guys are dedicated. They're chasing hard. Oh, come on, you shit net little fuck. That's like. That's like a beautiful, like perfectly timed backstab. And his net's too shit. These guys. Fucking hand, dude. We didn't need it. We were perfectly fine. Yeah, this guy's net is garbage. Just fucking do it. Man, this cannot be real. There you go. Guy getting like way too lucky for my taste. Alright, let's kill the latent guy.
Uh, we can't retaliate because of the uh, the the wind, whatever it's called. I think an invasion like that, honestly, is really... It's not that hard. It's just that you can't engage. Like, you need to know when you can and can't engage. <laughs> like, this is just one of those cases where the opponents are really bad, but, like, you can't commit. Like, you really have to take your time and play, like, on the periphery. I don't know if it's a, it's a word, but... Great, great player, dude. I'm not sure I like this. You should become an invader. <laughs> uh, hey man, there's nothing stopping you. Need to learn fundamentals like chainsaw. I'm so done. It's funny how like every invader knows how to do it now. I thought it would take longer. Okay, there's three of them. Oh, there's a red in there. We got a traitor. Let's chainsaw them. No, I'm just kidding. He had double straight sword for a second. Idiot red. No! 
Fuck out of here. Useless. Summon red? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I figured, but... Since he wasn't attacking me, I wasn't sure. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt, but he did nothing. Just wanted to say that Gankers cannot change some, but you literally found a summon trying it. Oh, that's funny. You wonder why from designed reds to attack red it made sense in dark souls 3 honestly and elden ring though i mean blues don't even make sense in the first place like oh that was so close Is veteran actually optimal on dex? Even though the scaling says otherwise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a dex weapon. Veteran prosthesis is a dex weapon. Let me show you stats. My stats are not special. Pretty good though. I would say for uh, for strength build, like my strength stat allocation is how I like it. I know Veil vale rocks similar like stat, uh, strength stat spread than me. Like we both like high endurance. I know a lot of competitive players don't like high endurance, but <laughs> you know what? I'm probably gonna go to like 34 endurance once we get the fucking Ring of Favor plus. Uh... Uh... Oh wow! What the hell? Yeah, that was questionable. Once we get that Ring of Favor plus three. This guy's net is... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see why. I see it. I see why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... Girl, like, stop doing that. Like, the only reason you fucking... His net is like other shit. I mean, why do I even bother? This is like unplayable to like the highest level.
hope we can hit him. Actually hit him. Oh. Like I can't push it. Oh, now it's dude, this is like the most inconsistent shit. Need to improve the chainsaw? No, I don't. I don't really care about that. Some days I'm good, some days I'm not. Fine with me. If I'm bad like today, I'll just remove the armor and I'll be fine. It's not a big deal. I'd probably be more consistent though if I actually held the controller like everyone else who does chainsaw from what I've been hearing. Let's get something that can pressure this guy. Insane fucking cute back step. You want real AI generated PvP in the DLC? I mean, we're pretty close to that already. Ooh, we rarely get this, uh, this mood in Lernia. You tried Crag Blade on Zway. No. 
And you're talking as if it's fucking amazing. Like, this is 15%. Like, we know it. Damage in this game is crazy. Be careful about that moon veil. That the guy behind was following. I'm telling ass gameplay by the moon veil, dude. game dude This weapon is so fucking obnoxious.
The ninja, thanks for the resub for 18 months, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, that guy had the mind, dude. That guy had mind. And his L2 button was working. Like, clearly. cheater we got a cheater insane Well, we should focus first on killing the phantom. First knowing if the phantom is damageable, that's first. They could both be cheaters as far as I know. We need to we need to find out. Both cheaters. All right. So we got two cheat, not one, but two cheaters. Yeah, two cheaters, guys. Like, good luck with this one. I mean, there's really only one way we can win this with two cheaters like <laughs> one cheater is something two cheaters that's something else just make sure the other guy yeah he's coming Also, uh, what I should do... Fuck. Not this. We need a bleed chainsaw. Ironically, like, I'm sure there's something like that, too. D 
dead light chainsaw, yeah, exactly. This is looking grim, guys. Like, <laughs> with two two of them, infinite HP. Like, one, I think I can outplay one. And, like, status proc them to death. But two of them? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. He's, is he lag switching on top of that? Sure, guys, honestly. Not really sure about this one. I think Thunter's Stong is off and there's... <laughs> Dude, there's two fucking cheaters, not one, two. Last cheater you fought FT 55k? Yeah. Guys, I think we might have to Black Crystal out of this one, though. I don't really see, uh... With two infinite HP cheaters, I don't really see, like, a way to, uh... To win this, really. Like, there's not really that many plays. You can run for an hour? Yeah, I could. Yeah, I know they can be knocked over, but I mean, good luck with that. Like, there's like there's two people that have infinite HP chasing you, not one. There's two, and they have like max level damage for like they can just spam everything forever. They have infinite stamina, infinite FP, so you can't outrun them. Like the only reason why you'd be outrunning them is because they're really ass and they don't cut corners properly.
Man, we would need like Radon and just hold it. I can't even see where we hit them because they have infinite HP. That's too risky. Like, we can't actually see where we're hitting them. I mean, we must have gotten at least some chip damage out of that. Even if he has 65k, like, I'm sure we did a little bit. I'm getting some FT back just in case we need to escape. Phantom is somewhere too though.
did blight may work i mean there's a few things that can technically work here but i don't have them on me to be careful though like i have <laughs> like chainsawing is kind of risky honestly I'm trying to think here um about that. That fucking pig scared me. PvP guys when you're good at the game and smart that's what you do right <laughs> like this guy To lock on to him and it's not working. There you go. Scary. We get hit by that. We get knocked down by the way. Then he can catch up to us.
Ding 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 ding. Yeah, they fucking DC, dude. <clears throat> Insane. Dude. Two cheaters. We make two cheaters DC, dude. Easy. Heather, thank you so much for the for the resub for 14 months. Thanks a lot, dude. Dude, what a bunch of shit players. What the fuck? This is fucking ridiculous, guys. Two cheaters, like, two fucking cheaters, not one, two. Like, they just sat there and decided, like, today, like, we're gonna fucking cheat, like, both of us, because one's not enough. Like, Jesus fucking Christ. We love our mental patience. No, for real, dude. Heather, thanks, thank you so much again, by the way. Imagine three cheaters in a small one. Well, cheer code, there's a limit, like... Actually, unironically, though, you'd probably be able to win if you had, like, um... Um, what's it called? If you had... Uh... What's the name of that thing? Um, Radon. If you had Radon Ultra... You might actually be able to win, but you'd need to, like, do it from the get-go. And just sit there for, like, a while. Oh, this phantom scared me. I just changed my mind. <laughs> Uh, okay, he's here. I'm not ready for it. Let's back up for a second. Insane. <laughs> Holy shit, genius. Thank you so much for the bits. Thank you so much, genius. <laughs> oh, man. Where are they? Oh, they're on the big platform, I bet. No, they're not appearing on the radar and they're on the small platform. Interesting. Yeah, it's probably best I do this.
close. Let's close the gap. You were invading and crumbling Azula. You got me real good. No, I was not, dude. I was not. <laughs> well, at least usually when people do that, they were like good fight. Like you almost got me or something. But you know, I appreciate that you got beat by someone you thought it was me. Yeah, like seriously, LD, like it's not. <laughs> it's your G9 feet lover. No, it's G9 leg lover. It's different. Mongus, are you still playing that Clash of Titan thing? Dude, Faded, what was that nostril thing? Like, that, that reminds me of something, but, like, it's so far behind that I forgot what it was. Dude, Mongus is on the Clash of Titan eSport team. They call him the phone crusher. Because he makes everyone breaks their phone. <laughs> Clash of Titan, dude. Like, Mongus, you're the only person in my entire life who ever brought up that name. Like, I'm not joking. Like, no one in my entire life have ever told me the words Clash of Titan. Like, you're actually the first one to ever do it. Do you say patch soon? You know something we don't? Uh, I can't say. I can't... I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> oh my fucking god, dude. Uh, why is it so much fun? Please tell me. You know, I always uh, get the physical thing, but I should be using the magic one. Oh, ho, 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 you little shit. You little shit. Let's see what his level is next time. Looks like an empty world, all right. I love how he. <laughs> love how he missed every knife and the bubble popped on its own. This is gonna be obnoxious. I 
can already tell. He's cheating. All right, I got the green light. We can't. We can't fall here, though. Here we can. Did the, the other phantom, like, uh, back out? I think he did, right? I cannot wait to kill that fucking phantom. Just need to find the red now. Can't dodge all of it. I'm out of stem. There you go. Good player. No. Dude, dude, fucking losers, man. Wow, these fucking losers. Look at that. Look at that. Look at these fucking losers, dude. Holy shit. God, these people suck. God, they suck so fucking bad. Bunch of shit players. God, they all suck so bad. It's insane how bad they suck. Jesus Christ, dude. It's a game. It's a game for pussies. Like, this is insane. Like, dude, the fucking... Does the arrow glitch and then... Just fucking... <laughs> fog walls after that. That's quite insane if you ask me.
Dude, what a game though, right? What what invasions we get, right? That's crazy. Like we get two like two cheaters, then we get a gang squad of fucking arrow glitch, and then like their phantom doesn't want any part of it, so the host just fucking fog walls because there's another invader in there and they can't get a free win. That's insane. The whole point of PSN was no cheaters? No, that wasn't. The whole point of PSN was that PC has fucking shit latency. That's the whole point. If PC is fine, like, we don't play on PlayStation. I don't play here. Although, to be fair, like, it's kind of funny how it became, like, I don't know if there's more cheaters now. It could be. Yeah, yeah, it has more players, look. There, there is definitely more players, but, like, I don't think it would be enough to, like, there's probably, I don't know, but maybe seamless does make a huge difference. But I feel like, may, like if we take seamless out of the equation, like I don't think the player difference would like be a huge deal for like the choice of going one or the other. I think it's really more like the fact that there's artificial lat, and that's really I think the the deal breaker for PC. Visible threes, dude. My favorite. Insane range. I think for this one, we probably want this. Was it Veil that found Golem Great Bow Arrows? Uh, yeah, I think it was. At least from, from my knowledge, I think it was. He's the very first person that told me about it. And usually when something new like that comes along, like everyone just messages me. Like something I already know. <laughs> so I'm kind of used to it, but... Like, when he told me, like, no one... I'd ever mentioned it before. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm, so, I'm sure some scrub somewhere, like, used Golem Arrow and then got the explosion, but never, like, realized or anything, like, you know. It's like saying that Painted was the first Mailbreaker player. Like, you know, other people have played with the Mailbreaker before, but it was, like, the first, like, good player to actually, like, play and develop, like, a play style around it and, like, be successful with it. That's what we mean by that. So it's like the same thing with Vel and uh, the Great Ball. I think. I mean, I'd have to ask him. Great Spin Slash and Double Nagi.
he's alone. That's our chance. Need to finish him. I play with a Wiimote, it gives me an advantage. Because I can just, like, you know, do very drastic and, like, very strong movements with my hands, and it has an impact on gameplay. Holy shit. Genius coming in strong with the 100 fucking gifted sub. Holy fucking shit. Thank you so, so much, Genius. This is, like, so much. Jesus Christ. Well, guys, Genius, official sponsor of the channel. Officially. God damn, dude. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much, genius. Extra R1 there was like so bad that it actually got me. There you go. Get that max punish. Are you still using a battle beaver? I am actually. I uh, I went through a few of them though faded. I'm not sure. Uh, not sure. I'm not sure it's the best idea to get one. Like, I had a bunch of controllers with stick drift. I'm probably gonna send them all, like, for, for repair once I, like, I find, like, some sort of, uh, of, like, you know, like, a, a nice, like, repair shot. And then, like, just give them the whole bulk and, like, play, like, uh, make it worth it for them to, like, repair, like, all the, the controllers I have at the same time. That's probably what I'm gonna do next instead of buying more new ones. Do you play claw or do you use a pro controller? No, I I I use a uh, normal, no paddles. Whoa, insane lock on strength lock onto the holes. Oh, I was not ready for the sleep though. Well, oh, the host is dead. Unfortunate. Nikon has Hall Effect controller, so. I remember when I talked about Hall Effect Frenzied, <laughs> I was actually wrong, like, about Hall Effect, and I think there's a big misconception out there, and I was part of it, like, um, I, I, I was part of, uh, 
of that misconception, misinformation. We all were led to believe that all effect sticks were better because they don't have stick drifts. But there's a reason why we actually use potentiometer instead of Hall Effect. Like Hall Effect sticks are actually like extremely unprecise, and they're basically like uh, extremely bad. Like they're they're much worse than potenti potentiometer. Like you actually lose a lot of quality for the precision of your stick. So uh, it's a big deal. Like you don't want to play with Hall Effect sticks if you're serious. Like, maybe if you want, like, a casual controller or something that you can play, like, uh, you know, your casual games or something. But if you're, like, playing seriously, you don't want... I think he cleared the world this time. Maybe a bit high. Yeah, it seems like the world's cleared this time around. <laughs> it's kind of funny. come here probably because this part is not cleared so we have a place to back up when we need to right now. Dude, this is like as random as it gets. This is scary. We need to kill him. We need to hurry up and kill him. There you go, okay. Okay, the host was pretty far. It took a bit longer to kill that guy because we were all cramped up.
I almost just left, dude. That's a bad shot. This guy is honestly so bad though, like it's not it, it's not that rewarding to kill him. I mean it's just a typical ganker, it's just that the difference is the map is good. And the teammates he gets are like, you know, your average players. Like they're like they're not like uh coordinated in any way. Yeah, I don't think he has friends though. That's probably the reason why uh, the ganks are like that. Belmont, thanks for the resub for 18 months, man. But hey, ganking me? You're definitely going to find friends who want to do the same. <laughs> if you don't like me, you will find people that are just like you, I promise you. First time catching a stream? Well, welcome in, welcome in. Always nice to get... <clears throat> to convert some of the YouTube scrubs into Twitch chads. Nice, we got Langdale. This place is a great map, honestly, to invade. Be careful, there's some up and down, though. Cool. I don't know if I want to commit there. Yep. just don't have an angle. <laughs> oh, 
not have enough room to walk around, unfortunately. This bow's a treasure. Yeah, dude, great bows. Great bows are like one of the biggest like redeeming quality for Elden Ring compared to other souls. Like the great bow is just the most fun range option souls games have ever gotten. And it's funny because the way you utilize them is free aiming. Do you play invasions perma focusing on host full tryhard mode or having fun killing the phantoms? Uh, well, about the tryhard part, I, I try to vary the weapons. I try to vary the weapons from like during like one stream, I'll try to switch weapon here and there. And then from stream to stream, I'll try to vary the build. So I'm not going full tryhard, like uh, in a sense for gear wise. But when I'm in the invasion itself, I always go for the W. I don't go for anything else. I don't go for flashy. I don't go for uh, for play. I don't like. Sometimes I'll I'll play with my food, but it's extremely rare. I don't like to do that. And that's probably the biggest reason why I'm very consistent. Like, sometimes we have our moments of, of flash, right? Where we get, like, a cool swap or a cool parry swap or stuff like that. But usually I try to be as calculated and as, like, uh, risk-averse as I can. So if I see, like, an opportunity for an... Uh, let's, let's call it, like, an optimal kill where you just get one arrow on the host and then the host falls off a ledge. I'll target the host instead of the phantoms. <clears throat> But usually, like, the most optimal strat is going to be to target uh, the caster. Because if you don't target the caster, you're gonna be fucked. And, uh, you don't really... it's not necessarily the host that's the caster. Wow, that did massive damage with the uh... They don't do a lot of damage, so I can afford to make a few mistakes, but I still try to not play too, too stupid. Like this spot, though. That's what's close. They're sticking like really close to each other, too. Okay, let's reset. Get the PVE in there. Change strat. There you
black flat is my favorite. I don't know what memory this is, but... I feel like he locked onto something. What is bro cooking? Like sometimes, like you, like it might seem like ruthless to just attack them and kill them like that. But usually these people have like someone ambushing you, like somewhere. So it's like you, you can really never know what you're up against when you're invading. Like sometimes it's just like a lone dude that doesn't really know what he wants. Like you don't really know why they have Thunder Stone on, but most of the time there's someone hiding in there. And they're like some bait or something. I mean, I've just been there too many times. I kind of expect it now, even if it doesn't happen. I'm always worth checking how many are in the session. Yeah, I could do that. I don't like. I don't like doing that. I could though. Kind of hard to ambush in an area like Lernia? Not really. You can just hide in a bush or like hide at like just the right amount of distance with the uh, with the veil talisman. Like there's a bunch of things you can do honestly in, your, in Lernia, and it's even worse in Lernia because once you know, once you get ambushed, there's nowhere to go, like no cover, nothing. So you're in big trouble if you get ambushed in like right in the open. He had the invasion kind of timed out, so... Dragon. Everyone's favorite. Well, that's uh that's GG alright. I think the holes just ran though. Yeah the holes just fucking skip skipped past the dragon. And DC. All right. Quick game. That's the build today. Just you know, good old just boring strength build. Dark Souls Trilogy Remake will come before Elden Ring 2. I mean, I don't think they intended on making an Elden Ring 2. They might change their mind after the success of Elden Ring, though, to be fair. Like, they might actually consider making another one. But they did say that they wanted to take a, a break from Dark Souls, this Dark Souls series. I mean, it's funny that they say that because, let's be honest, like, Elden Ring is so close to that.
Okay, let's see what this guy got. I think he has the, uh, you know, has the regen, I believe. He has the regen physic. <clears throat> Alright. Didn't need to jump there, it's just stupid. I don't know if he also uh, buffed like before the fight. Insane. Get uh, disturbed during the fight. This guy really likes his jump attacks. I mean, this is just a horrible fight. That's not how you play PSGS, man. <clears throat> Rose learning? Yeah, true. True, true, true. Oops. What's the best uh, jump spam weapon, guys, in your opinion? Like, what is the best weapon to spam jump with? Do you think HTS is really, uh, the best weapon to spam jump? Anchor, HTS, straight sword. Two great swords. Oh, then straight sword. Dual twin blade, PSSS. Okay, so... So, consensus on PSSS, it seems. <clears throat> yeah, it's true, though, that... Uh, straight sword is hardly punishable though because the follow-up comes out so fast and and it has like such low recovery I guess that makes sense dual katanas <laughs> dual katanas don't ironically have an insane range on the jump at least dual kibas Single Kiba is better in your opinion, Flavi? Well, I'll take your word for it since you, uh, since you never play Kiba. <laughs> Nino Story, thanks for the resub for one year, baby. One year, let's get it. Thank you so much, man. I feel like we're going, we're going to get ganked here. I can feel it. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. <clears throat> Fucking gank set up at the beach. Pick a pick an actual map, please. Like, if you want a gank like that with three people, just pick a good map. A map we can actually play in there. Oops. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like I can win that. Like, I've tried, like, we've been playing this game for two years now. I know what's possible and what isn't. And fighting in a closed area like that with against three people is is pretty much a, uh, a forfeit. Jimmy, thanks for the resub for 10 months, dude. Yes, places like that should really not be invadable, in my opinion, because there's really... There's really nothing you can do. Like, I mean, you can get lucky, don't get me wrong, but... Mm. 
But on the other hand, like, uh, it's not going to be, like, invading. Like, prayer room, for instance, right? Where you have, like, an actual really nice long level to play in. Like, this, this place here is one of the nicer places to invade, in my opinion. Any good deck site other than Sword Dance? I don't like Sword Dance on site. I really don't. I dislike it, like, very much. I think, uh, I think site is just... Whoops. I think site is just way better with, uh... With flame strike, honestly. Like speaking of sight, bring that out. Like sight is just a perfect flaming strike uh, weapon. Like the timing is just right for mix-ups and everything. I quite like it. Don't know where the host is. I thought he fell off. He stole my backstab! Oh my god. <laughs> the PvE just yeeted the host. Quickstep sight used to be badass. Uh, I don't know if Quickstep was badass. I used it, but it was quite broken, honestly. Now it's no, I think it's fine though. I mean, it's still very like Quickstep is still very strong. Just just the fact that you can reverse uh, backstab people like very easily makes it like very powerful in my opinion. But oh uh, really? I didn't want to make him fall this way though, because that's not going to kill him. I wanted to make him fall the other way. Not sure what Kevin was doing there. Well, we're not getting good invasions here now. Oh well. Why do people wear Radon? I don't know, dude. There's something, there's like phenomenons, phenomenons with like PV ears that just all wear the same armor. It's really funny. It's almost like they're NPCs, right? That's just bad. Sure what this guy is doing. Be careful 
was a PvE there. No look R2 L2. I mean there was really no point in looking. Like the threat was really the the unpredictable PvE that you never know if it's gonna blast through through the wall or something. Mungus needs me at gate front. They ran to the boss. Oh okay. Insane. <laughs> He ran to the boss, dude. Great. Okay, we're not gonna use sight here. Oh no, another one of these. Alright, let's do this. Oh. We're not fighting. That's gonna be a great fight, guys, I promise. <laughs> Double straight sword? No. Two-handed? Alright. be here for a minute guys great player my input, right? There we go, that's what I wanted. range <laughs> you gotta be kidding me well we still got the punish but I didn't mean to do it either time <laughs> pretty bad fight but I mean to be expected
Average greatsword user? And ironically, yes. I played pretty bad, to be fair, though. Like, I didn't want to take, like, any risk. And I think that didn't really work in my favor. I think we could have won much quicker. that net again got the skips are scary something yeah there's another guy We have uh no he has he has the area cleared but saved. Like he saved this game with the area like that. Oh this is gonna be dangerous though. Or maybe not, never mind. to find the other guy. Like, the other guy is separated, but we don't know where he is. There he is. Alright. We have to be careful about uh, the ritual spear, though. <laughs> 
insane shit in it. I needed to dodge because of the Ash of War though. I did not care, all right. Same lock on. <laughs> I think he's gonna fog wall this time. Fucking Mongus classic. No bongo, he has not. I mean, I'm sure with the perseverance, it's gonna come at some point. Like, I'm not unbeatable or anything. Not fucking this guy again, the runner. 
using the runner with eels. Oh, let's kill him while he's not here. There you go. You won't have to run this time. It's Usain Bolt? Nah, dude, that's an insult to Usain. Dude, Usain Bolt is a legend. What weird streams we're getting though, right? Like, I feel like we're getting so many weird streams recently. It's like we get like human speci specimens just like one after the other. Great fucking game. <laughs> you love frame traps? I don't think that was a frame trap though, he just lagged. Like we, we got hit like after the fact. Just Wi-Fi warriors at it again. Starfist damage is nuts. It really is. Like, when we say Power Stance damage is fucked up, like, the <laughs> Starfist R2 is part of it. Like, that shit does so much damage. Like, you're, you are winning trades with that R2 for sure. And it keeps priority. Yeah, yeah, Starfist is also the PvE cheese, that's right, Chirico. Yeah, according to Gino, it's a pretty damn good PvE weapon, which, uh... I think everyone should take his word for it. I think he knows what he's talking about. Why <laughs> Invaders feels like the good guy? I think we are, though. Like, unironically, we are the good guy here. In other games, I'm uh, not so sure, but in this one, we are. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In this game, we absolutely are. Maybe, maybe not in previous Souls, though. I wouldn't say that.
It's all nice. Shaded castle. That's a really fun area. I was like completely clueless. Unfortunate. He got abandoned. I think he just didn't follow. I, re I really wish though that for the host like killing invaders like yielded like some worthwhile reward like the amount of runes you get for killing an invader as the host makes it probably feel like it's more annoying because like you like as the pve or you really don't get anything out of it if you actually got something out of it that would that would make a lot more sense i think Insane lock on. I just panic rolled a bunch there. Fucking lock on threw me off like big time. Like the people we're playing are so bad that I'm starting to play like really bad as well. <laughs> it's like the level of competition right now is just so low that I'm starting to play really bad. I'm blending in, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gonna be rusty when the L2 deactivation patch arrives? No, I'm good. Like, the reason why we use all these L2s is because, you know, it's just a way to do it. Just gonna adapt to whatever the new way is. I don't know if it's gonna be fun or not, but we'll see. Just wait for patch 1.11, bro. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say you're kidding to 1.11. The L2 deactivation patch. That's, yeah, that's funny though. Okay, there you go. Should be more fun. We got a team. Yeah, we got a teammate. Well, it's gonna be quick. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, it turned last second. 
Oh boy. Oh my god, dude, you gotta be kidding me. Bro, I thought this was going to be like a decent invasion. <laughs> I'm sorry it wasn't. Why do you mostly do 125 and not 139? Because the meta is 125, it's not 139. Like, people always try to game the system, but you need, like, uh, need players that actually anchor the meta. Otherwise, like, people just keep on leveling higher and higher and higher. Like, the, like, you have to understand, like, the whole idea of having a level cap in a meta is that everyone plays on the same playing field, and then everyone distributes the stats how they think is best for their build. Like, the, the fun actually comes in the limit. Like, build making is fun because there's a limit. It's because you can't get as many points as you want. So the more point you put, or, like, if you start to go overboard... Or if the meta is 125 and you go 139 because you want to kind of edge the, the points that meta gives you, you're not actually, like... You're not doing it right. You're just trying to abuse the system in some capacity. Obviously, though, it's your game. You guys do whatever you want. But this is how I see it. What do you have? Aww. I wasn't sure if you had the fist there. I almost attacked. I thought he was not going to sleep. He didn't give up. I stopped attacking just to make sure he actually gave up. He did. RPP Retro Vagabond. Always choose Vagabond. There's a few builds that are optimal on other classes, but like 90% of build, it's going to be Vagabond all the way, dude. Depleted the RP so he quit? Yeah, I don't know. Parry spamming kept him alive longer than necessary. I do think the parry, the, the backstab critical damage is fine, but the parry crit damage is too high. Like that shit does like so much damage. Yo, that's the that's the fucking guys who uh, who were cheating earlier with the bow and actually ran to the fog when it was two v two. Actually insane. We know what he's worth. Or is it? No, it's not. No, no, no. Never mind. I'm tripping, guys. I am tripping. Thank you. 
You miss remove weapon berry? Yeah, same here. I really do. Do you ever miss a berry? Oh, dude, absolutely. But to be fair, though, I don't go for that many and I don't miss that many either. Like, I really, like, if I go for a parry, maybe I'm not going to get it, but I'm rarely going to get punished for it, though. Like, I, 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 li I like to think I pick my spots, like, well. But an advantage of, like, throwing a lot of parries, I think my best example is probably um, a Night Lord. Night Lord, when the game, I mean, he doesn't stream as much anymore, but... Back when he streamed often, he was throwing fucking parries, like, after parries, after parries, after parries. And, like, spamming it way too much, but throughout that process, he did get pretty good. Oh, do we fight here, guys? Uh, I'm actually not so sure. Like, we're stuck here, basically. It's 3v1, like, stuck in a spot with no enemy, like... I don't like that the fucking gankers always pick spots where you can't do anything. But let, yeah, sorry, the, I didn't finish the light, Night Lord example. Like with Night Lord, like yes, he was throwing a lot of parries, but that's actually how he got much better and much more dangerous at actually picking the right spot. So it was kind of part of the learning pro process, because now when he throws it, it's usually in a, at a very good timing, right? So it started off as you throw it almost every time and it's kind of bad but during that process he got to a point where he understood when to throw it and so it be he became much more dangerous and he's like right now he's probably one of the more dangerous player that will parry swap on you because he really picks his timing well where are we Cancer as fuck. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Shot for below. That was a tough one. Let's do let's do one last 
Let's do one last, but I'm not gonna end the stream though. Yo, Owen, thank you so much for the three, actually the eight months. Thank you so much, Owen. I want to watch a YouTube vid with you guys. Hear your thought on it. Is Qatar a good weapon? Yeah, it's it's pretty good, Faded. Um, I think like the biggest perk of like the Qatar moveset would be Qatar or uh, feet weapon. It's really good at catching light rolls too and pressuring. Like it takes almost no stamina to just keep chaining running attacks. And then you have the big damage combo with the running R2 that combos into R2. And then you have the roll catch timing with flame strike when you land uh, the running attack. That's quite good, honestly, uh, Faded. Against good players, though, it's like it's rollable, but like all in all, you can still have like hectic movement to make it make it more difficult to like be dodged on reaction and shit. All right, great sword. Oh, staying by the net. I love great sword. There's no pressure. <laughs> Insane swap. Check out that vid I was thinking of. Alright. Um, uh, new private window. Give me one sec, guys. I'm gonna find the vid. Okay, so if we go, um, Ganker, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Gankers. Okay. Okay, let's, um, uh... Brave pup. There you go. Let's watch something together. The lowest of the low. Gankers. The lowest of the low. Filth wrought from iron dross, corrupted by their collective shame. Or perhaps, might they be noble? Champion protectors against the vile scourge of the Red Menace. Let us begin. Mm -hmm. Ganking, as used in reference to the Souls series, is a strategy wherein the mechanically hunted player uses allies and extreme preparedness to become a hunter, willfully luring would-be killers into a sudden, shallow grave. Speaking plainly, the host gets a couple buddies and they pancake an invader like a drunk dump truck driver. On the surface, you might have a strong reaction to the idea, mm -hmm. especially if you've experienced a gank yourself. As an invader, it is a dirty thing a way to ensure you are taken to task for participating in an intended mechanic. God. As a host or cooperator, it is a thing of justice, a way to turn the tables on an aggressor. But how much of that is an excuse? How valid are these viewpoints? Let's focus on invaders. Invasion, As an invader, though. you push your way into another's world to obstruct them. 
Your methods and efficiencies are largely up to you, but your goal is simple. Kill the host. But you have no way to validate the quality of that host, for better or worse. Uh, I'm going to just pause it here. Like, first of all, I'm going to say a few things while we watch this. First of all, <laughs> the invasion that's going on in the background is just perfect. Like, the guy's getting fucking spell spam from every direction or L2 spam. But yeah, when it comes to you don't like you can't control like the quality of the host you invade what's unfortunate there is that before it was actually possible uh before there was always a um levels in souls games that were more suited for pvp aka pontiff aka the forest uh like in every souls game you have a dedicated pvp area which like if you invade there you're basically guaranteed or almost guaranteed to find higher quality hosts. And that's why in Dark Souls 3, like the invasion were much more like, um, like the quality of the invasion was much higher because the people we were fighting were always better. So unfortunately, when it comes to Elden Ring, there's no such things as a dedicated PvP area. So what he's saying is true here in Elden Ring. Like you cannot control the quality of the host you get because there's no such thing as a gank city. There's no hot spots for PvP where if you invade there, you're going to get like higher quality players. But it's unfortunate because it was a thing in the past. All right, let's continue. You may encounter an extremely unprepared host who has just lost their cooperator to incompetence and their death is all but guaranteed. Or you may encounter a host who is at the farthest edge of the matchmaking range with allies far beyond that, oh my God. who have cleared the level of all other threats and have been waiting for you. I am of the opinion that in its most basic form, you should understand and accept that risk when you invade. You make an active choice to attack, and you cannot demand that choice be met with a certain quality or consistency beyond what the game facilitates. And the game facilitates ganking, for better or worse. I am also of the opinion that ganking is exploitative of the game's mechanics, and to be fair, ganking is, like, it's always been, like, exploitative in every Souls game. It's just, like, taken to a new extreme in Elden Ring, really. Like, it's it's taken to a whole new level. And that's mainly due to the, the player limit, really. And there's no real way to claim it's inherently good, or that it's even an intentional mechanic. I view ganking as a consequence of an underbaked implementation. The product of a system trying to balance the odds for the uninitiated, with no real concern for how it might be abused. But does that make gankers wrong? Or are they just responding to some perceived injustice done through exploitative means unto them? For the sake of argument, put yourself into the mind of a ganker. You spent dozens of hours trying to play through the game with your friends in jolly cooperation, using your collective might to bring a glimmer of comfort or ease to the harsh landscape. But at every turn, you were met by the mean red man. He came into your house, and he killed you dead. He even mocked your corpse. And he does this over and over and over, until you are defiled beyond recognition. But despite this, eventually, you made it through. Now, you have power. Your friends have power. The mean red man's time has come. You summon your allies and trust yourselves in the finest instruments of torture. Dragon breath to cover the map, moon veils to punish the heel, and spells to spam to your heart's content. For good measure, you clear the level of every single enemy. Now, you wait. Before long, the mean red man appears, but this time, the advantage is yours. You set upon him with deadly precision, knowing for certain he cannot withstand your combined barrage. He dies in moments and you disgrace his corpse. Your team cheers in glee, thrilled beyond reason. As the light leaves his eyes, your minds converge to a single thought more <laughs> you draw your taunter's tongue and chum the waters waiting with bated breath for the stupid stupid sharks one by one they fall some try their best others submit quickly but all of them die Dude, these should any of them get brutal. the better of you you can always summon another ally or even disconnect to avoid technical defeat in the worst case if by some miracle they manage to kill you despite overwhelming odds you can always try again Depending on which side you sit, this probably sounds like either heaven or hell. For my money, it can be either. I want to express myself as someone who has both ganked and been ganked. My ganking journey began and ended with Dark Souls 3. 
I played previous entries mostly alone, only taking advantage of the multiplayer I found throughout at random, or occasionally with a friend. I had a very strong sense of anticipation and dread around being invaded, generally assuming I would die when invaded, and pleasantly surprised when I survived. But a few months into Dark Souls 3 release, I was well on the path of PvP. The only problem was, I was bad at it. I had invaded in previous games, mostly as a blue, but my victories were 50-50 at best, and that was assuming a 1v1. Invading in Dark Souls 3 was something I desperately wanted to get better at, but I couldn't grasp the meta-level combat. Damage was high, passive poise was removed, and gank squads were everywhere. I felt it was a lost cause. But a chance encounter with a powerful low-level invader, a twink, made me realize there was an entirely separate bracket to PvP. That I didn't need to be high-level to fight, and that I didn't need to invade. I could prepare myself for these powerful low-level invaders with my own low-level build, and leverage my host advantage to compensate for my lower skill and fewer efficiencies. <laughs> it's so funny because he's so honest about it. But, like, it's funny how he explains how he became a twink to counter twinks. And then you'd ask the invader twink and he would say he counters gankers twinking. So it's like a vicious circle. In short, I could gank. Now, at the time, I did not realize just how substantial my advantage was. Particularly because I was still regularly losing. I was considerably worse at PvP than the typical invader, and I disliked making builds that followed what I considered a cheesy strategy. Anything that would give me an edge at the cost of RP or fashion wasn't in the cards. A quick side note for those of you who never experienced Dark Souls 3 low-level invasions, there was essentially one build that dominated every other. This build could be made at level 1 and utilized one weapon in particular. The Dragon Slayer's Axe, oh, yes. a weapon that benefited greatly from the raw infusion, which removed scaling and the need for higher levels. It also had innate lightning damage, which required high endurance, thus a higher character level, to gain defense against. It could even be further buffed with a powerful flat lightning damage bonus increase using an item without level requirements, which had disproportionately powerful effects at lower levels. These builds could also use the Dark Hand, a fist weapon that had no level requirements and very high base damage due to the fact that it could not be upgraded. Couple those weapons with heavy armor, any parrying offhand, and a ring that increased repost damage by 30%, and any novice with access to YouTube can make a Terminator <laughs> that could march on the high wall with impunity. I'll talk more about Twinks in a future video, but I specifically wanted to highlight these invaders as a catalyst for my ganking. For every invasion I won against some other build, I would lose to these nightmares. Their damage oh output God. was absurd, they threw shit when I died, and they were all the same. For the record, I love these builds, and I miss them dearly. Part of that feeling is provoked by nostalgia for bygone power, part of it is my appreciation for min-maxing at low levels, and part of it is how I managed to challenge them. Dude misses... he misses twinking. <laughs> the man misses twinking. Like, truly a ganker at heart. But I, I think there's a lot of interesting insight, though. This is, like, the guy doesn't seem unhinged, though. That's the thing. Like, usually gankers are pretty unhinged, and the guy doesn't seem like it. But there's a lot of different views in there. Let's keep watching. Though I didn't do it alone. I had friends who played Dark Souls 3. They would play through the PvE just like the other games, but only participate in the most casual multiplayer elements. Once I had found my rhythm battling invaders at the high wall, I encouraged them to join me. I convinced them the PvP didn't have to be all one-shots and straight swords, that at lower level, the stakes were a little lower and the combat a little slower. But it was the concept of organized team fighting that really captured them. Yeah, I wasn't right telling there. them to go it alone, I was inviting them along for the ride. To turn an isolating, lonely battle into a confident team match was a strong incentive. They agreed, and we began. We made builds centered around single weapons or themes, meeting the bare minimum requirements and using whatever we thought might be fun. For us, ganking was a way to shirk efficiency and embrace novelty. So when the Hyper Twinks came knocking, we used our gimmick builds and obscuring ring great bows to give them a little surprise. Instead of invading Night Baby Boy and his sorcerer BF, they invaded Naruto Uzumaki and his three shadow clones. It was among the most entertaining things I've ever facilitated. And it worked. Our win rate skyrocketed as a unit, and we could spend hours at a time fighting 4v2. Diver 
<laughs> Shout out to the actual 4v1 going on right now on screen. Uh, remember in Dark Souls 3 you could actually get 4v1. Hurting the invasions from undeserving new players and towards our blender of justice. For me, this helped to make PvP the main game and everything else preparation. We would gank weekly, sometimes d It's so- it's so funny. It- like... <laughs> We missed the player limit, but like the flip side there is that that brutal 4v1 though. Daily, using it as a way to induct people who were otherwise terrified of PvP and the series more broadly. It felt like we were doing something genuinely good, with the only victims the invaders who wanted nothing more than to spread misery. In my mind, we were the good guys. And while my view of invasions has changed a lot over the years, I just want to clarify that it felt justified. But I couldn't gank every day, and more specifically, I didn't want to. I started ganking as a way to learn PvP because I wanted to invade. I never believed invasions were all bad, only that there was a good way and a bad way to invade. And through ganking, I had gotten better at PvP. I didn't need to pick the best gear or use the meanest strategies. I could fight on my own, on my own terms. I was ready to take my skills to the streets. With everything I had learned about min-maxing low-level builds and what to expect from gankers, I was able to make short work of a lot of average teams. They were generally predictable, especially if I knew how to push my advantages. Yeah, I just want to throw that out there, you know, the whole, like, uh, ganking to improve at PvP. I mean, you see the result in the gameplay, like, it doesn't lie. I'm just going to throw that out there. I didn't panic when things got rough. I knew when to fight and when to flee. Finally... I had entered the realm of competent PvP. And just as ganking had made me a better invader, invading made me a better ganker. It wasn't long before the high wall ceased to challenge me. My friends had advanced their skills, and I was perfectly capable of fighting off most invaders on my own. To be fair, like if you want to get like better at these games, like the activity that's gonna make you improve the most is dueling, in my opinion. Like the dueling skill transfers over to pretty much every activity that you're going to be doing. Um, invading, though, there there is some different skills to invading, but the invading skill will not transfer really much over to dueling. Uh, not nearly as much. But we still wanted to gank. It was our main gaming activity as a group, so we took our business up a rung. The Crucifixion Woods. In the Crucifixion Woods, the rules were slightly different. Instead of being able to summon three allied phantoms, you could only summon two. And instead of two invaders, there could be three. 4v2 became 3v3. Adding further, the zone was guarded by the Watchdogs of Farron, Covenant invaders who were mechanically allied and summoned automatically. To be fair, what he's talking about here is the player limit being different in certain areas, like a PvP hotspot. The forest here, where he's fighting in, was a PvP hotspot which could host three three fan like uh three uh home team players so the host and two phantoms uh and it could host two red invaders and one uh wild card which could be a uh an aldridge or a blue phantom so you had a situation where you could get uh you could get 1v3 you could get 2v3 you could get a uh, 2v4 or you could get 3v3 and that whole six player limit that everyone has been asking for forever is really what sparked this sort of a uh, team play sort of uh appeal that this guy is talking about both from the side of the gankers and the invaders so it's a very important point that i wanted to stress the player limit was really a core part of the multiplayer experience and the sense of community and that was a big appeal big big appeal to invasions both from the host perspective and the invader while not perfect, the odds had never been more even. It was in those woods that we made our mark. Our builds evolved from low health, big weapon goons to competent, stylized builds made to embrace styles of play that genuinely interested us. The relatively low level and pressure of three invaders made us optimize without compromise and, to this day, gave me the best gaming experience of my life. Every night became a contest of personal bests, seeing how long we could survive before the endless onslaught eventually wore us down. Anytime an ally died, seeing if one or two of us could hold off the enemy until we could call reinforcements. It was a fight without end, where victory was measured in distance, the only goal to survive. As I reminisce, 
I am reminded of the reason I am not still there, fighting to the end of days. Elden Ring. What Elden Ring did to Gankin is, in no uncertain terms, the greatest tragedy I have ever experienced in gaming. For once, that is not hyperbole. I actually had my personal life devastated by the release of a new game. My friends do not gank in Elden Ring. I do not gank in Elden Ring. I only casually invade. But why? In short, the four-player limit and the lack of invasion zones. Elden Ring made sure to exclude two small but incredibly involved mechanics, the impact of which is felt ever more to the day. Many players couldn't care less, particularly players who never cared for the PvP in the first place. But for anyone who loved what Dark Souls 3 brought to the series, or for anyone who could have been made to love it given the chance, Elden Ring has left a six-man hole in their bloody, stupid hearts. He could not be more on point on everything he just said there. I mean, there's really nothing to add to that. But what's crazy is that I suspected for a while, and I'm sure you guys did as well, that the reason we didn't see as many dedicated gankers in Elden Ring was because it was actually too easy uh, for gankers and unappealing. And from this guy's perspective, who, were, who was actually one of them in previous Souls, he does explain why he doesn't feel like ganking is the same anymore. And it's so funny because it's the same for all of us. Like, we don't feel like it's the same experience from everyone's perspective. Uh, I think it's definitely something that from software should listen to, honestly. Now, obviously, you can still gank in Elden Ring. You can get two friends together and beat on invaders, but only two friends and only one invader at a time. This is the PvP equivalent of Halo 3 4v4 Slayer, where half the players got disconnected at the start of the match and three of them were on one team, except there's no respawns for the solo player. Stated simply, I hate Elden Ring ganking. Not because it's unsporting, not because it's lopsided, but because it's boring. Where is the fun in killing one invader, knowing they can't get help, knowing that the only way they win is by sheer determination or dumb luck, it's not impossible, but it's worthless to impose. Anytime I'm invaded while co-oping and we quickly run them down, I feel like a bully. It makes me want to either put down the game or go it all alone. I have nothing but respect for those who carry the invasion torch to this day against those who still bother to gank. And I have nothing but questions for anyone who still finds it fun. I am someone who genuinely understands its merits and wants it to return to its former glory, but as it stands, I have to ask, why? Obliterating people with ease has an appeal, no doubt, but I can't imagine it doesn't get old. The only thing that makes sense to me is that there simply isn't an alternative. It's still the only game that even remotely facilitates this sort of PvP, and you can't invade as a team. So if you want to fight as a unit, and you have the common sense to not find 5-minute arena matches an acceptable alternative, then ganking 3v1 is all you have. I know some preach 2v2 is acceptable, but for me, it's just not the same. I have people I want to play with. I want bigger fights. I want combat where one death doesn't decide the battle. I wanted Elden Ring, the biggest Souls game, to have bigger fights, bigger ganks, to embrace the multiplayer so unique to the series that it became its own game for me and you guys remember back in Dark Souls 3 when we thought that Elden Ring, because it went open world, was going to have an increased player limit of 8 players <laughs> instead of 6? Like, we legitimately thought that because the game was going to be bigger, that the player limit was going to go up. <laughs> God, were we wrong? Others like me, but alas, we have been so far abandoned, leaving ganking as an irritating shadow of its former self. So is ganking justified? To me, it only matters that it was fun. Is ganking fun? It used to be, both as a ganker and invader. But Elden Ring has taken that from us. And with the upcoming DLC, it doesn't seem like that's going to change. From Software doesn't seem to be interested in their own multiplayer, instead distracted by traversal and exploration. We, the PvP community, are likely to starve. I spoke to the balances and intricacies of ganking at its most potent, but I would like to end this video with a small tribute to what ganking could be at its most novel. 
I recruited some of those old friends and reenacted a version of what I consider my greatest ganking triumph. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I'm gonna actually mute it because the music is going to uh, make it impossible to get some content out of it. But yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god just fucking look at it this is absolutely hilarious to be fair like they they all do like no damage dude what is the setting there like why is this blue bar so damn big i'm so confused they do no damage and his blue bar is huge like, I bet they have unupgraded weapon, but I still don't know why his blue bar is that big. Yeah, build. Dude, no one does any damage. <laughs> what is that? What is going on? Uh, yeah, light roll, no armor, big FP bar. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, what did you think? I think the guy is quite well spoken. It makes the vid like really in uh, interesting and entertaining. Uh, it was a good watch. And yeah, also surprising to hear uh, how things are perceived from the other perspective of the ganker. But I genuinely think, though, that, you know, this guy might have been ganking for a while. And he's making content about it now. But I don't think he's the... He represents the majority. I do think the majority of gankers are probably a bit crazy. Like a bit unhinged. Uh, th this guy clearly isn't. He's just like a normal dude just enjoying the game. But yeah, I think the big message in that vid is spot on that we miss we miss that player limit. That player limit was a big L that we all that we all took. And everyone who played the, the multiplayer in any capacity got hit hard by that decision. Really huge, huge uh, failure by FromSoft in that regard. Huge L. It's unfortunate but yeah guys if you want to check out this guy's channel <laughs> this guy's name is emotional john so uh yeah that's going to be it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this stream another deathless stream we've had a few deathless stream recently but yeah uh thank you guys so much for coming by again we're gonna go and pass on the torch and raid someone else thanks everyone for coming by uh i'll catch you guys up next time all right take care guys okay uh who's on right now who's on who's on we got restless we got montage bloody finger oh dude we got lost playing skyrim though i'm tempted oh you know what guys i never I never raid other games, but, I mean, Skyrim? Absolutely. We are... We were going to raid Lost playing Skyrim. I haven't raided Lost in a while, too, so... Alright, take care, guys.